Hey guys, Clint here. Real quick before the video starts, I just wanted to say if you've been enjoying this series and would like to see more series like this, then let me know. Hit this video up to say 500 likes and we can do some more like this. All right, that's it for now. Let's jump over to the video. We're going to take a look at the surfacing as well as the light consistency. And there are three things that you want to get consistent with light. It's direction, it's intensity, and it's color. She is mainly being lit by this lamp, but this hood is wider than her face. So unless this light was around the scene more than 90 degrees to her side, there is no way that this light could get over to that side of her face. So in order to keep things consistent as far as the direction, then we need to make sure this is all shadowed. We also need to look at other things. This shouldn't have bright light on it. This needs to have the same moonlight that everything else is getting. And this uh, is actually pretty close. That's where I start putting in some of these changes, starting with a multiply layer on the face. I'm just trying to come and match this shadow tone that he already has. No cloak and the sky. I, I did patch that in. Now the cloak. Let's move back and start thinking about what we learned from the first image, which is painting fabric. Fabric is generally very matte. It resists being very bright from a highlight, and it resists going really black. We see this becoming very light and very light and dropping to almost black very quickly. Is it possible? Yes, but not given the lighting that he's giving us in this scene. Moonlight is very soft. We can, as artists, use some license and make it brighter and more colorful than it probably actually is, but it's not going to take a dark purple fabric and turn it into almost pure light. It's not that bright. So that needs to be toned down. On the other hand, we've got this torch. Torches will tint things towards their color, like you see the orange range here, but they, like the moonlight, are not that bright. All right, they give off light, but they don't have an intense light. The direction is actually really pretty good for this. The direction of the light coming, the way it would hit it, what it's hitting, and what it's shadowing, fine, good. The color is actually pretty good. He's incorporating the color change of the light, but the intensity is just ramped up way too much uh, to mimic the way that it would work on the surface quality. So we are doing this. We're putting some of the blue tone from the light, showing that it is getting that cool light. We are letting it stay warmer in the light, but bringing down that value so you have more color. And the face overlay. The face was still a bit warm, so I wanted to tint to that to the cool side. When I'm thinking of a scene like this and working through the lighting, looking through the direction, the color, and these sorts of things, it is not unlike the way that a computer would render a 3D scene. It starts with the wireframe, and then it connects all the polygons into a surface, and then it finds the light source, and then it traces where the lines from that light source would go. And it would say, would that be lit? Would this be lit? Would this be lit? Would this be lit? Okay, it's going to hit this object. What is this object? What is the surface qualities of this object? Okay, let's calculate how much light would bounce off of this object. When I hit this object, is it going to pick up any of the color from this object? So it's going to now compute the fact that it picks this up and bounces it back up to the next object. And that approach can work with your artwork. That's the way it works for me. I approach it very logically, just stepping through, thinking about each thing. How would this behave? like a human computer just computing the elements in the scene and working it through in my head. On the arm, this is super rough. This is just a note of direction. The arm needs to go very cool. And some more detail has been added to the face. I did go here because this is really the focal point of the image. And, you know, I'd like him to know kind of how to take this once he gets to the stage. So the moonlight can be casting a light on here and it's not really getting bright. We're not going super bright with this. Like we still are could go way up here. This 
is that bright, you know, purple blue. But that's not what we need. This is still right there in the mid range. And it's nice and soft. And you can see how that goes onto the skin there. And this needs to be applied to the rest of the image. And really, I like this scene as a whole. The person hiding behind the wall, the warm light over here, her in the shadows, some sort of gothic city in the background, characters there waiting, she's going to be taking them out. It has a nice visual read. It has a nice uh, narrative to it. But what we need to do is just really work on that consistency. To him, to Gabriel, you're doing good, man. Honestly, you are. You know, I've been looking and talking about a lot of issues with the artwork, but seriously, you have already come so far and you are getting so many things right. Do not take that hard. Uh, what I'm talking about is just tweaks, man. 80% of the work's already done. You need to come in and do 20% of the tweaks to it, and you're going to have some really strong pieces. They have the right narrative. They have the right feeling. You have the right ideas in there, and now we just need to hone them. So keep doing your thing, man. Double down on, you know, doing studies of perspective and surface qualities and lighting. I think those three things added into the skills that you have already practiced and got down, you're going to be just doing killer work. And, you know, I'll be looking out for it in the future. Uh, so many of you guys submit your portfolios to me, and I see these exact same issues. So try now to go back to your own artwork and say, you know, what am I doing that I saw in this video? How can I correct it by the things that he said? You know, a wise man will learn from other people's mistakes. Make that effort and learn from it. I really appreciate you sticking with me through this extra bonus content. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to get future content, then please check out my Patreon. If you are not a patron already, patreon.com slash swatches. And I will see you out there. Until I see you next time, keep drawing.